Okay, I had a question, um, an inquiry from a student on how to solve problem 2 18 of this week's homework. So I thought I'd go ahead and solve it here. So uh, let me go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and click on first 80 pages of the textbook. And let's go ahead and find problem 218. It goes around page 40 something. 218. And I'm going to use snipping tool, so I'm going to type, go down here, I'm going to type SNIP and bring up snipping tool. And we'll go ahead and highlight this and uh, open up a new Excel. And here we go. And let's go ahead and paste this in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And... Um, Let's go ahead and use the template to solve it. The templates are pretty good as long as you can follow along what they're trying to do and they help you kind of reason it out. Now, you're not required to use the Excel template. If you think you have a better way to do it, that's fine. In fact, I encourage you to try to solve it on your own and then then look at the template and then see. So um, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and use the template right away. So I'm gonna go back to our, our, uh, our class and um, and if you go, I'm going to go ahead and close this. We don't need this. If you go here, it has the templates right here. I mean, I already have the template open, so I'm going to go ahead and get it and paste it in here. You guys can do the same. You just have to open up the, you know, go ahead and find the, the, the template. So uh, I'm going to go here. I'm going to paste the template. All right, so let me double click to expand these out a little bit. So here's how he set up the template, or the author of the book set up the template. Let me zoom out just a little bit so I can see the whole problem. So let's read the problem. You're the CFO of Termination Incorporated. Your company has 40 employees, each earning $40,000 per year. That's the initial, so that's at time zero. At the beginning, of, you know, if you draw a cash flow diagram at time zero, um, they grow at 4% per year starting from next year, and every second year thereafter, eight employees retire and no new employees are recorded. So they're saying um, eight, re eight retires do here, and then here, and then retire here, here, and here. There's, there's 40 of them, right? So five times eight is 40, so this completes the cycle. And they want to know, um, so these grow at 20% along here, so we have to calculate that. And... Um, that lasts for 20 years. So the pension is $40,000. It's going to be, uh, says it here, um, entitled retired workers to an annual pension that's equal to their annual salary. So it's going to be initially whatever, 40000 When these eight people retire, this 40000 is going to grow one year at 4%. And they're going to retire. They're going to get 20 for 20 years. They're going to get whatever this salary is. Okay, and then later on, eight more are going to retire, and then whatever that salary is, they're going to get 20 years of whatever that salary is, eight of them. And then again in year five, so they want to know what the total liability is. So they want to know the present value of all these cash flows out in the future. Okay, so it sounds kind of complicated, but bear with me here, and you'll see this the way he's got this set up, it's not too hard to solve. He's got to kind of pay. We got to kind of be careful. So, if you re remember reading the problem, by the way, this problem for those of you guys that are watching this on YouTube and not in my class, this problem came out of Chapter Two of this book, Principles of Finance with Excel. A really good book uh, by Simon Beninga and uh, Tall. I can't read his name. Tall Mofalati. I can't read read it very good. It's a little bit bigger there. But um, this is a pretty good book. I like to teach my MBA class for finance out of here. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, let's go back to this, to the problem we're working on. So, so the first thing we want to do is we want to calculate the salary. And this is like the basic formula in finance. So you guys really should memorize this. It's equal to uh, $40,000 times parentheses one plus whatever the growth rate is okay and if this is more than one year you take it to the year right 
So the census is the one year. I don't know something to the one power is only you know is going to be the same thing. So I don't have to take it to the one power. So at the at the at, yeah, in year one they're going to get a raise of forty one thousand. At the end of the year is going to be a raise of forty one thousand six hundred. Okay, and then we can just double click this to send it down. No, see that doesn't work, right? Because we got to let's look here. What are we doing? Uh, first of all, the, let me just clear this because that's kind of I confused you there, guys. Let me let me clear this off. I'm gonna hit delete. Okay, so that's this first year. Now the second year is gonna be based on whatever happened the first year, so it's gonna be equal to whatever the first this year was, times parentheses one plus, and then again the salary growth is four percent. Okay, now we're gonna copy this down. And we want to make sure it always points to that 4%. So I'm going to hit F4 to put dollar signs. That makes it an absolute reference where it won't move. You could type these dollar signs, but it's best to try to figure out how the F4 works on your... Some some laptops that F4 work doesn't work very well. Try to figure out how it works. Well, but if you don't want to, just go ahead and type the dollar signs. We'll do the same thing. So year two is going to be that. So, this is, so then we can just go ahead and double click to send it down. And we have all the growth rates for all the all the other years okay uh, so so now we have the salary of one employee and then we want to know the liability of that one employee and then what we do is figure out the liability the, we, we figure out the present value right here at this year okay and then and then so I just want to know right here at this time what's what's the present value of all 20 of those payments of forty one thousand six hundred dollars so what I'm going to do is go equals present value and the rate. Okay, so the rate isn't the salary growth anymore. It's how much your money, the, the return, how much your, you know, your money, the cost of money, cost of borrow money. And I'm going to go ahead and have four on that because I'm going to I'm going to use this formula down below. The number of periods is always going to be 20. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'm going to hit F4 to make that stick. And then the payment. Um, well, it's equal to a negative, whatever this is, right? And there's not going to be any future value because if I, if I go out to this next one, future value there's not going to be any future value because after 20 years, you're not going to have any more payments and we're going to leave it as at end of period, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to use this, it says up here, pension is paid end of period. So I'm going to just leave that alone too. So I can go ahead and just close it at that point. So that's the present value of one employee, okay, uh, at that year, at the time, at the time they retire. Now I have to take that times how many people are retiring. So there's eight retiring. So then we have, so that's how much all eight is going to cost. So I would have to have that much in the bank at the time they retire in order to fund their pension, okay. So I can just copy this down. And then we have uh, how much you need in the bank for each one of these out, out there. So out at, out at this time period, I need that much money in the bank because their salary has grown up to this. So it's a lot more I need. Um, but the thing is, I can find the present value because they want to know what the liability is right now. So now I'm going to find the present value right now. So it's going to be equal to the present value. And the rate is still 10%. I'm going to F4 that. Okay. Uh, the number of periods, well, this is just going to be one period back, right? Because because this the, the 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 liability. I'm just going to take this and just take it back one year, right? And uh, there's no payment in this case, right? Because uh, this is just a lump sum that I'm taking back to a present value, and the future value is equal to. Okay, so I want my answer to be positive, and the way ca the way Excel works is if I have this cash flow positive, then my answer is going to be negative. So I'm going to go ahead and say negative this. Okay, so that's one way to make it positive. I could just make the answer negative too, but I'd rather make the cash flow negative and then I'm going to have a positive answer. Okay, that's just the way Excel works. And then I don't have to hit the parentheses because um, when you're doing an Excel function like that, if you just hit enter, it, Excel says, oh, he's just done. I'll put a parentheses for him. So... 
So that's the present value. So basically this lump sum, which is a present value of eight of these for 20 years at 10%, well, that lump sum, if you discount it back one year at 10%, it's equal to that, okay? And then we can copy that down. And then finally, all we're gonna do is we're gonna auto sum. And that's our answer right there. It's nice if you guys highlight your answer for me. Now, you know, a lot of times I go here, I go equals formula text. And then like that. So you can you guys can do that. But you guys don't have to do that for me because I can just hit a hot key and I can get all the formulas automatically. So there you can see the formulas all all done automatically. I hit the hot key. In. So you guys don't have to do that for me, but this is just for your learning. You know, we can also put the formula here equals formula text for that. And then I could draw a little arrow. I go insert uh, shapes, little arrow. So that's that, right? So you could do that for your own learning. But, uh, you know, you don't have to do that for me. But it's always nice to have it just for your reference so you know what's going on. All right, so that problem, it is kind of complicated. There's a little bit of nuances there, you know, like end of period and beginning of period. and But uh, you want to kind of get to, you know, these Excel functions. Another thing you can do when you're on one of these Excel functions, if I'm in it, I can go up here and hit this. And it tells me what I have, right? So the rate is 0.1, which is 10%. Number of periods is 20. And the payment is... So it actually shows the thing then explains it to you. It even explains each individual thing if I click on it. So that's another thing you can do. You can always click on it and then hit this little function wizard. And it, tell, and it brings up this func function argument box. You can kind of see and it'll actually explain each thing. Okay. So that's that problem. Hopefully it helped. Thanks for watching. Um, if you like this video, my picture is up here as always. Hit that to subscribe. You can also hit like and uh, comment if you have any questions on this. Thank you.